Hello. 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 Welcome. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study, New Life Christian Center. Yes. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Yes. Our pastor's not here tonight. And we're going to be having them in prayer. Yes. They're traveling right now. They're mm -hmm. in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to lift them up and uh, let God would just be with them. Yes. And uh, with power and with prayer. Yes. And also that they would be refreshed. Yes. So we're going to start off tonight. Tonight we're going to be in Galatians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. So once you get ready, there's some good stuff we're going to be talking about tonight. Absolutely. A lot of revelation, a lot of truths. Mm -hmm. So I wanted you to just in tune up, tune in, and also uh, stay uh, in, in conjunction with us tonight. Uh, follow us uh, in Galatians. We're going to start with verse 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe with your Bible. Yes. And we're going to just going to break it down and let the Lord just speak through us. Absolutely. So thank you for coming tonight and yes. just joining us. And we're going to get started. I have my wife going to start with prayer, and then we're going to jump into it. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, God. We just praise you, Lord. And we just come to you, yes, Father. Lord. We just cry out to you with our whole heart. And we just thank you for your just the in-depth of yes, your Lord. love for us. Lord, we lift up our pastors, God, Pastor Ken, Pastor Nancy, yes, and Lord. Flora, just your hand with them. And we just pray, God, as they are there, Lord, just serving and ministering and being refreshed, that, Lord, you are with them. And we just thank you and yes, praise Lord. you. We just thank you, God, because you are a God you, who Lord. hears and answers prayers. And, Lord, we just thank you because you have been answering our prayers, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we just thank you for the different testimonies, Lord. You've been healing, God. Thank You've you, been Lord. providing, Lord. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, I just lift up anyone who's turning in with us today, who's just tuning yes, in with us right now, that you know where their needs are. Yes, and, God, Lord. you are here for them. So we thank you and we praise you. And we look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So Amen. thank you. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the scriptures. And we're going to um, just try to dissect it. And we're going to try to give some revelation, some understanding mm -hmm. on what God has spoken. Pastors have already been breaking this thing down. And oh, yes. They've done an awesome job of just uh, that's, uh, just explaining what the, what the scripture is saying, what Paul is trying to say, mm -hmm. and what's happening with the Galatian church. Right. Mm -hmm. They're in a serious situation right now. <laughs> Paul has sent a letter mm -hmm. to the Galatians, and he's very passionate. Yes. Some things that he's not pleased with, and mm -hmm. some things that are not happening um, the way it should mm -hmm. with these believers. And so we're going to talk about that. And I want to say the theme, because there's a theme tonight. Right. The theme of our teaching tonight mm -hmm. is going to be sons and servants. Yes. The difference between son and a servant. Yes. And Paul broke this thing down. He used an analogy, and we're going to talk about that, mm -hmm. talking about the children of Israel. Right. And talking about going on to relationship and staying in relationship with the Lord. Right. And going on to grace. Yes. Walking in grace. Yes. And not being under the law. Mm -hmm. So we're going, to do, we're going to start reading in Galatians chapter 4, and we're just going to talk about it. How about that? Yes. Amen. So, Rita, why don't you go ahead and start us off. I just, as I get ready to um, read, I just want to say, you know, Paul was very intense and he poured himself into the Galatians. This is someone who has served them, yes. who has taught them, been with them, and he's poured himself. So there, he, there is that position where he can speak the truth right. and where he can share that with them. And I'm, I just want to mention, we ended, like when we ended in, in chapter 3, yes. at the very end, Paul said, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So right. he starts this, we start this fourth chapter talking about heirs. Yes, awesome. So I want to just welcome Lisa. Lisa, thank you for tuning Hello, in tonight. Hello, Lisa. Bless you. God bless you. you. I hope you're really uh, encouraged by tonight. Uh, Sharon, Hi, thank you Ms. for tuning Sharon. in tonight. Yes, yes. Amen. Hope you're feeling better. Yes, Lisa. we hope you're feeling better today. And um, so we're going to just go ahead and jump into it. So Rita, why don't you start off with verse... One, okay, and we're going to read on down, and we're going to talk about it. I'm going to start with the New King. Okay, Jennifer. yes. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. And so, even like right there, those three verses, right. it talks about the heir, yes, the heir and the servant. But the reality, or it uses the term slave, right. but the, the reality is there's a major difference between an heir mm -hmm. and a servant. Yes. A major difference it between is. an heir and a servant. It is. And, um, and Paul, right now, he's expressing something that is something that they could relate to mm -hmm. as Jewish people. Mm -hmm. See, in those days, 
they had what you call indentured servants. Mm -hmm. Those that worked in the home, in the house. Mm -hmm. And some lived in the house mm -hmm. with, with the family. And then you had their sons, mm -hmm. and then you had the sons of the servants. Mm -hmm. And he's making the analogy right here, and he's saying, as long as you're a child, right. talking about immature, he said when you're an infant mm -hmm. in, a, in a home, you're really no different. It's hard to tell the difference. It's hard to tell the difference mm -hmm. between a servant child mm -hmm. and a son. Mm -hmm. Because they both, he says, have to have guardians over. Mm -hmm. They have to have stewards over them. They have to pe people to take care of them because they're immature. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're like babies. But he's saying we want to come out of being a servant. Right. And we want to, we want to mature and grow in, into an adult. Right, and so we, we want to. But he said, when you when you're young, when you're just a child, right. he said, you don't look any different from a servant. Wow. Even though when you when you that you're you're an, you have an inheritance, right? Yes. You're an heir, mm -hmm. and when you grow up, you're gonna be master of all. Mm -hmm. But you don't look any different. So he said that there's a differentiation here. But he said we need to grow up, right, and grow up, right, and not be servants any longer, mm -hmm. not look like servants, right. But look like the sons that we were that called we to are. be, mm -hmm. right, right, the heirs that we were supposed to be. Absolutely. And so, and it says, until the time appointed by the father, there's a time when the father mm -hmm. will acknowledge the son mm -hmm. and he becomes like a master of the home. He becomes, he comes into heirship, mm -hmm. right? That, that inheritance comes upon him. Mm -hmm. And there's a time when an inheritance comes upon you when you become mature and you don't act and look like a servant, mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. And we're going to explain that what, it, what that, what that's like. But come into full sonship. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the first three verses is talking about. Yes. Come into that place of maturity. And there's a lot that goes into being a son. Yes. You know, being a son means there's, there's a father, there's mm -hmm. someone that cares for you, and there's just that depth right. in terms of that care. Mm -hmm. And so understanding the difference between the two is very important. Yes. Because the what is given the son is not necessarily as you grow up given the servant. No, no, no. So it's very important to understand that, and it shows the love of God. God loved us so much, right? To just bring us into the sonship. That's right. It's so important. And that's a good point, Rita, because you said a servant doesn't receive the same benefits of a son. No. And you gotta understand we're sons. Yes. And so we we have an access. We have favor. Yes. We have an opportunity that a servant doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And so we need to become the sons of God. We need to act like the sons of God. Mm -hmm. We have to have the mentality of the sons mm -hmm. and not the mentality of a servant. Right. And Paul's specifically talking to them because they're the Galatian church. They're beginning to act like servants. Right. When they're sons. Mm -hmm. He had given them a revelation. They right. got a revelation of mm -hmm. sonship mm -hmm. and their father. God being their father. Mm -hmm. And they walked away from it. Right. And they begin to act like servants. Mm -hmm. They went back to the, the things of the law, under the law, and the rituals of a servant. Right. And God and Jesus came to deliver us and bring us out of that mm -hmm. and, and gave us grace. Yes. That we can be sons of God. That's right. Now, now mm -hmm. sons of God. So this is what Paul is talking about. You know what comes to me as you're talking, just kind of pops right in, is I just remember I, a couple weeks ago I went away to um, see my father's wife, Manan, mm -hmm. and um, and we're in the hospital. You know, she's diagnosed with cancer. We're in the hospital, yes. and there's reports given, right. and you're in a, you're in your situation, and it's like you as a son, you all of a sudden have to remember who you are, right. because life and things can be difficult, and you can begin to react right. like you're not a son. Right. You can begin to you know be panicky mm -hmm. and say, "Oh, the report is this. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? You know, this is difficult. This is this is terrible. This is rough. What's going to be the outcome?" Right. But you have to remember. Yes. And it's like I saw. I found myself. I had to open up my scriptures. Mm -hmm. See, that's the important thing about growing. Yes. I had to open up the scriptures and say, "What?" Does the Bible say in this circumstance, as a son, yes. I'm a child of God. That's right. We are children of the Lord. We That's can right. stand on his word for our circumstance. Mm -hmm. We do not have to behave like we don't have what we really have. So it's really important for us to study and to learn as sons mm -hmm. who we are mm -hmm. so that we can stand on that word and benefit from what God has given us and That's not right. miss out on the inheritance, be it healing, be it provision, mm -hmm. be it believing God for your children, but all that comes with that. Come with sonship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly right. So we're going to read about that. We're going to explain that a little bit more. 
But let's pick up from there. Would you like me to read it in the um, translation? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Because. All right, I'm going to read it from the, um, the Passion Translation. Let me illustrate, as long as an heir is a minor, he's not really much different than a servant, although he is the master over all of them. For until the time appointed by the father, the child is under the domestic supervision of the guardians of the yes, estate. Yes, yes, yes. So, so they're sense. telling them what to do. They're, they're telling them what to do, and they don't look any different. As a, as a child, but we're growing up, we're going on, and we're going into what God has prepared for us. Yes. Okay, we're not going to go back, but we're going to go forward mm -hmm. and understand who we are, mm -hmm. who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm a son now. Mm -hmm. I'm that's not right. a servant. That's right. He set me free. Yes, he did. And, and so that's where we're going to go from there. So verse 4, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son. Mm -hmm. Born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Awesome, awesome. You know, it says it says the fullness of time. Yes. You know, God has a fullness of time. He does. He has a time when He sets in His own in His own order in His own plan mm -hmm. what He wants to do, what He wants to do. Yes. It's not in our timing, mm -mm. but it's in God's timing, and in the fullness of time when God was ready. Mm -hmm. He sent forth His Son yes. into the earth. And that was so powerful. And so God has a timing. And so He instead He was born of a woman. Mm -hmm. That's very significant. Yes. Because she was a woman with His flesh, earthly, natural. Then That means He was born under sinful flesh. He was born under the law. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Even though He was God, He was born under the law. And He says He had to be born under the law because... He himself right. redeemed us. Yes, he did. He came as a man. Yes. But he redeemed us. And I want to say that word redeemed us. He purchased us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He purchased us yes. with his blood. Right. But he came under the law that he can redeem us from the law. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did when Jesus did. For those, it says, who are under the law, mm -hmm. or were those of us that were born in sin, mm -hmm. he can redeem us now that we might receive what? The adoption yes. of sons. Mm -hmm. That we become legitimate legal, legal sons. sons. He did a legal transaction. Yes, he did. <laughs> when he died on the cross, That's exciting. raised his blood, shed yes. his blood. Yes. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Yes. And so he did a legal transaction to mm -hmm. adopt us. And now we become legally his. 100%. 100%. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I'm happy. Praise God. So that's what God did for us, okay? Yes, it is. All righty. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, mm -hmm. crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Wow. There's so much yes. in that very scripture. Yes. There is so very much. You just think about, I, I just have, even today, you think, why today of all that we've gone through? But I even think, I've seen, you know, on some just different YouTube channels, and you can see pe children that maybe they're raised up in foster care and they don't have a parent. And their heart is to have a family. Yes. Their heart, you know, is to be adopted mm -hmm. and to belong, you know, yes. to have a of his name. Yes. And to know yes. that they belong. Yes. And to know that they have someone that really deeply cares about them. There's nothing like it. And I mean, a lot of us can't, in the natural, can't necessarily, no. we can't necessarily identify with that because we've, had parents, but we right. cannot. But you can identify if we mm. haven't had a father right. in the home. In the home, and so um, there we go. We're okay, back. we're sorry about we're that. Sorry about that. We lost signal for, for a second. A second. I want to welcome God. Joseph Richards. Thank yes. you for, Hi, for tuning in. Yes. Amen. It's good to hear from you, and I hope you're going to be enjoy, uh, be blessed by what yes, we're talking Joseph about tonight. Yes, Joseph said the word never guides us wrong, and that's a hundred percent correct. That's right. That's very. That's, that's correct. So Amen. we're we're talking about you know just the idea of what it means to have a father. It means everything. It does. It means everything, and you know you think about it. I know as a young person when Dad came to visit, it just mm -hmm. meant everything. When he came to see about us, when he came to take us somewhere, it meant everything. Yes. And sometimes it's hard to kind of get into the idea of a father because not everyone's mm -hmm. had a positive experience. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important to learn because God is the perfect father. Mm -hmm. He's the perfect father. If you can imagine that. Yes. If you can even imagine it, he's the perfect father. That's and right. when it says crying it out, Abba, that's yes. like that daddy. That's daddy. that I'm daddy's girl. Yes. You know, we're close yes. and, and everything happens and it and brings that excitement when daddy comes home. So that's very important. Yes. And it says that the spirit of the son, who's yes. Jesus, mm -hmm. comes in and lives in our heart. 
and, and his spirit of the sonship mm -hmm. knows the father. Yes. He said, nobody knows. Jesus said when he walked the earth, he said, nobody knows the father but me. He said, but I'm revealing him to you. Mm -hmm. But now he's inside of us, living in us. And so now we can have that spirit of the, of the revelation of the father. Yes. That he is my father now. Mm -hmm. He's my dad. He's my daddy. He's my Abba. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus had. He walked in that. Right. Now we can have that relationship. Absolutely. With the Abba Father. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. And he says that that, that, that that spirit that's within us. And he says, therefore, you're no longer slaves. No. But you're a son. But a son. You're not a servant anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we need to not go back and live like a servant. But let's live like a son mm -hmm. in, a, in a father's house. Mm -hmm. Amen. That we have full access to the father. And when you think about a father and that you could cry out, Abba, Father. Right. If a child cries, you know, dad's going to respond. That's going it. to say, what, do, what does my baby need? That's what right. do you need? What is necessary? Mm -hmm. What needs to happen? And they don't stop. No. And that's the Lord. That's it. That's God. He hears our cries. He does. He, he does. hears our cries. And we've been crying out to mm -hmm. him. We're we going to continue to. But he hears our cries. And that's important to know. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're listening, know that God hears your cries. That's right. He hears your cries. Mm -hmm. And he is a God who hears and answers prayer. He does. He does. He's a good father. Yes, he is. He's a real good father. He's a good, good father. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Amen. With you want to pick up? All right. But then... Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So it's important for us to understand that revelation of who we are. Right. You know, that we are now sons. And it doesn't matter the gender. I'm a, I'm a woman, but I'm a son. You know, right. just like a man who's going to be a bride of Christ. I'm, I'm a son of God. Yes. So, but then, no, verse 8. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. Right. But now... After you have known God, mm -hmm. or rather are known by God, which is awesome, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Yes. Praise God. See, he has come to set us free. Yes. So we need yes. to remain free. We need to stay mm -hmm. free indeed. And, we, and, and, and that's something that we have to be careful of, that we don't slip back into bondage. Right. Exactly. So that when you say knowing God, we want to build that relationship with Father God. Right. We right. want to make sure we're remaining close. Because God will help us, mm -hmm. you know, to not back up and right. to not fall back into bondage. Right. See, they, they, these Galatians, they got saved and they got excited about God. And it, they came into the freedom of, of relationship with Jesus, this grace gift. And it was so exciting, mm -hmm. so wonderful. But then they, there was others who came in. Yes. Teaching another, another gospel. Another gospel. <laughs> teaching <laughs> religion, mm -hmm. teaching the law. Right. And they fooled them. Mm -hmm. They confused them, mm -hmm. and they made them, or they 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 encouraged them to go back to now come under the law mm -hmm. and and rituals to trying to please God and try to justify themselves. That's right. Through the natural things, mm -hmm. through these laws, the Old Testament laws and rules. Mm -hmm. And when Paul found out about it, he's like, "What are you, what doing? Are you doing? What are you doing? Yes. Why are you going back?" That. To the beggarly mm -hmm. elements that's, of this world. That's what. That's exactly what it is. He said, "You've been set free." Mm -hmm. He said, "That's not the gospel that right. I gave you. Mm -hmm. That's not the gospel that you received." Right. But why are you going back? In the next verse, the chapter before, he says, "Oh, foolish Galatians!" He does. <laughs> he said, "Who, who has, has bewitched you?" Who has you? bewitched you? You know, this is strong language. That's right. It is. It really is. You know, mm -hmm. and so he's he's like admonishing them, but then he's like he, he he's trying to encourage them. Yes, he is. Don't go back, don't go back to the to the ways the, of bondage that you came out right. of. Right. You know, because the law was 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 a taskmaster. The mm -hmm. Bible says. Oh, it is. It was bondage. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't keep the law. No, you can't. We need grace. We need grace. And that's what Jesus provided for us. Grace by faith. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. You you mentioned something when you were sharing. You mentioned the word freedom. It's mm -hmm. like Jesus came and gave us, and God gave us freedom mm -hmm. from bondage. And freedom is everything. It is. Freedom is everything. To, is. to just feel that and mm -hmm. to not feel bound and to feel just, just I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can't get it right. Because we can't no. get it right. We can't do it. But but when we, in God, we really don't even have to try. We have, to, we have a relationship with him and we're praying. But the Lord will lead us. As we stay close to him by his Holy Spirit. Right. I mean, he, we have daily communion with God. Isn't yes, that awesome? I mean, I can't get an audience 
with the president of the United States. Not mm -hmm. one of them have mm -hmm. I been able to, but I can have an audience That's right. with God That's right. as his daughter. That's it. I can have an audience. I can share my heart with mm -hmm. him. We can tell him anything. That's it. Anything at all. And however it comes out, mm -hmm. we're able to tell him we don't have to be religious. No. We don't have to say, okay, I need to sit up, stand, walk mm -hmm. this way. I need to make this many services. I need to, you know, just, God's like, just just share your heart that's with me. Right. Just, just talk it out. It could be while you're driving in the car. It could be while you're washing the dishes. While the children are napping. Wherever what God is there. That's right. And he loves us so much. He does. He does. And the Bible says, He whom the sun makes free is, is free, free indeed. indeed. So we should be walking in freedom. Freedom means everything. Freedom, freedom. yes. Because these, these see, Paul was a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. All the Pharisees, so he knew the law. He knew. He knew all the statues, mm -hmm. and they had been living under this for for, for, gen, for generations. Mm -hmm. And he said, "No, no, Jesus came yes. to get you from out of the oh. law." Mm -hmm. He said, "The law was like a taskmaster." Oh yes. It was. It was like your old. It was like the servants, guardian. Mm -hmm. But he said, "Now, no, no, you come into sonship, mm -hmm. and so you don't know, need to no longer be under the the, the servanthood of right. the law." Mm -hmm. But now come under this new thing called grace. It's freedom to serve God, to walk in God. Amen. And and to be faithful. Walk right. by faith. Yes. And that's what we call. We're the children of Abraham. We says. are. We are. Yes. So if you want to go ahead. Okay. We are in verse. Verse now. Okay, I'm going to read nine again. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage. So this is where we have to be careful because you can't believe that anybody wants no. to be in bondage. So mm -hmm. it's very important to pay attention and then acknowledge that's where you are and, and return to the freedom that God has given us. Right. You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you lest I have labored for you in vain. Right. And that's part of the, what the law was. It was a lot of observing certain dates, and you were, it was very strict. Very strict. And if you didn't observe certain holidays and festivals, then, then you, you weren't pleasing to God. So you weren't justified before God. And, and, and Paul says, hey, you know, why are you going back to that? Mm -hmm. You know, he said, you've been set free from having to, this mandate to observe these certain dates mm -hmm. and, 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 and holidays. He said, to please God mm -hmm. in the natural he said, you've been set free in the spirit, mm -hmm. the spirit of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's come inside of you. Life and truth has come yeah. inside of you. Mm -hmm. So now you can serve God in spirit and in truth. In truth yes. And so we, we're set free to serve him. And these, 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 these uh, believers needed to know that. They right. need to know that. Mm -hmm. Don't go back. Mm -mm. Don't go back. You're a son now. You're a son. You're not a servant. You're no longer. So in the, in the Passion Translation, it says, before we knew God as our father... We were unwitting servants to the powers that be, which are nothing compared to God. But now that we truly know him and are intimately known by him, why right. would we for a moment consider turning back to those weak and feeble principles of religion as though we were still subject to them? Why would we want to scrupulously observe rituals like that? You know, I think about uh, like special days and it talks about celebrations of the new moon, annual festivals and sacred years. But, you know, think about the, the, the servant and the son and the servant wouldn't dare go in to see the father. No. Could you imagine that no. without permission? Right. But the son can creep into a board meeting. Mm -hmm. you, I've seen, you've seen presidents and their children are right. on the floor, can mm -hmm. creep into the board meeting, can just crawl right up on their laps that's and like, just kind of get away with the things that a, a son can because that's mm -hmm. their father and their father loves them. There's privileges that's right. that comes along mm -hmm. with being a son. That's right. And like I was sharing earlier about being in the hospital, we have to recognize who we are mm -hmm. because we can stand up against the circumstance, get the scripture speak to it. Mm -hmm. It says, I know how it looks in the natural. This is supposed to turn out to be a disaster but according to the word of God I can believe God for a miracle right here and right, right now because of what Jesus did mm -hmm. for me That's I can right. stand on the word claim it believe it and receive it mm -hmm. According to the word of God, in the name of Jesus. That's right, exactly, exactly. In the name of Jesus, and that's the reason why we pray. That's it, exactly. And the scripture says, on, on your point, mm -hmm. is that sons now we can come boldly, boldly. <laughs> to the throne of grace. Amen. 
to sound, find favor mm -hmm. and help in a time of need so we can come boldly to our Father. Right. We can come right in the boardroom. Right in. We come right into where He is mm -hmm. and come before Him and say, Father, I need you. And you talk about beggarly. We don't have to pray with, oh God, please, would you provide? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Lord, we need you to take care of this bill, please. But according to the word, he's already given it. We can say, Lord, according to you, where he said, you shall supply all our needs according right. to your riches and glory. We stand on that. We receive it. We pull it in. We thank you for it. We declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I, I love the way you said that because you know what? We've been praying for a lot of people. Yes. People going through health issues. Yes. And I just feel like we have, as sons, mm -hmm. a bold position where we can come before our Father. Yes. And we don't have to beg. Mm -mm. We just can ask. Daddy, Father, heal my sister, mm -hmm. heal my friend, mm -hmm. heal my mother-in-law, yes. heal right now. Right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Your word says that by your stripes right. they are healed. They are healed, yes. So we're just coming to you, Lord, concerning your word, with your word, as your children. Mm -hmm. And we, Lord, thank you for answering our prayers. Yes. And the Father says yes. Yes. And then we, yes. Say, then we throw Daddy. Daddy, daddy yes. you're our daddy. Mm -hmm. And then he, he said, yes, I will answer. Mm -hmm. I will heal. I will deliver. And that's how we get our prayers answered. It really is. And imagine just that revelation of when the bulb, when the light bulb goes on. Mm -hmm. And we're like, wait a minute. That's right. <laughs> According to the word of God, I can declare this and receive it. And then I want to stop and thank him. Right. Every time I see any little change mm -hmm. for the positive. Right. We just want to say, Lord, we thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, we think we have to have a testimony when things are 100%, when things are 10% testify. Right. Say, Lord, I thank you that I feel a little bit better. Lord, mm -hmm. I thank you that we got $10, even if we need $10,000. right. You know, Lord, I thank you mm -hmm. that you have given us a nice day with the family. Lord, I thank you mm -hmm. that you've allowed us to be able to just do what you would have us do and to still be here. So it, as we're just being thankful and grateful mm -hmm. for the little things, then, right. then things will get bigger and things will just, we will have what we're asking mm -hmm. for. We'll have what we're believing the Lord for. That's right, exactly. It's just very important mm -hmm. to speak faith. Yes. You know, and to trust God and to agree with Him mm -hmm. and to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Agree with what God says. That's right. Mm -hmm. You made a very good point. You know, let's thank God for the little changes. Yes. When it gets better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you get up 10%, 20%. You're feeling better. You're You're stronger. You know, you're still alive. Thank <laughs> God for it. That's, Amen. A lot, that's a lot to thank God for. That's a lot to thank God for, right? Because <laughs> everyone can't say Not that. everybody can say that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You had a diagnosis, but you're still here. You're still here. You're, still, God. you're still hanging on. Had a good day. You did. Lord, I want to you thank had, you for the day. That's it, exactly. <laughs> yes. Amen. That's what prayer happens. That's how God answers prayers. Yes. Because He wants to answer our prayer. He does. I was in the storehouse today. I got to share this. And we were talking about healing, and mm -hmm. we were praying for the sick, and yes. people raised their hands. It was a, a room of people, group, mm -hmm. group of people. You had quite a few today. Yeah. You had 21 at one time. Yes, exactly. Praise God. In the room, and, and it, it was a really a, a good spirit. Mm -hmm. It was a good anointing in there, and we, we had people raise their hand for prayer, mm -hmm. and this one lady who I knew that God had touched her, right. raised her hand and said, can I, can you, he said, she said, can you share my testimony? <laughs> can I share with you? I said, no, no, you share you it. share it. She gets up, and she shares it. And she talks about how God, she was in a coma. Mm. And she know God touched her in a coma. Mm -hmm. And he woke her up and she came out of that coma. Mm -hmm. And now she's alive today. Wow, to and it. people started clapping. Mm -hmm. And she said, I knew it wasn't nothing but the Lord. Nothing but the Lord. She said, because I, I could have been gone. But God woke me up mm -hmm. out of this coma. Yes. And it was just like faith grew in the room. Yeah. And she just starts to crying and mm -hmm. weeping mm -hmm. because she knew it was the Lord. Right. It was God. Yes. It was Daddy mm -hmm. that touched her. Yes. So it was powerful. It was powerful. Yes, it is. Praise All right. God. All right, I'm on verse. Okay, so 10, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Wow. And so, you know, there are there are people, we have leaders that have just cried over us, yes. have just mm -hmm. been there. And you have to realize, you're talking about your time, mm -hmm. your energy, you're pouring out your life. Right. And so... He's, he's grieved over this. Mm -hmm. He's grieved over this, yes. rightfully so. So he says, Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. Mm -hmm. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. wow. What? You want to stop right there? Yeah, I want to stop right there because I want to go back to what you said, verse okay. 10. Mm -hmm. 
You observe days and months and seasons and years. And I can give it to you from why would you want to scrupulously observe rituals like special days, celebrations of the new moon, annual festivals, and sacred years? I could imagine the work mm -hmm. that was. Wow. Can we even imagine yeah. how much work How much work they that? had to go mm -hmm. through to maintain that when they had been brought out of that. And, and freed and liberated wow. by God. Wow. And the next verse says, he said, I'm so... Go ahead, you go. I'm so alarmed about you that I'm beginning to wonder if my labor in ministry among you was a waste of time. Wow. Wow. I can imagine how long Paul poured into these these believers. Mm -hmm. He probably birthed them, mm -hmm. you know, from unbelievers to believers. Yes. And he poured his life and they got a revelation and I, I can imagine they rejoiced. Yes. They were like, man, this is freedom. This mm -hmm. is, Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else someone said came in and said something different. Mm -hmm. Brought in a new gospel. A different gospel. Yes. Contrary to what they had learned. And they went back. Mm -hmm. And they fell back. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for Paul mm -hmm. to hear this. And, and, and yeah, go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's heartbreaking. I mean, I think we all have seen this. Mm -hmm. And we've seen people on fire. And then there's just been that backup for whatever the reason. But, you know, what's exciting is we need to know that as we are just spending time with the Lord and staying with God and letting his word come in us, mm -hmm. then it, we have to pay attention to what's being said. Yes. And we, we, we have to make a point to say that's not the word. Mm -hmm. And it is so important for us to realize, is it is, is that in the word? Right. That's right. <laughs> when things are come, when things are said, mm -hmm. none of the gospel, what is God saying? Is that bad? Is that scriptural? Right. Is that scriptural? And stop right then mm -hmm. and not let ourselves hear things and listen and take on because the world will give it. That's right. But it doesn't mean that if it's not scriptural, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that's what God is that's saying. That's right. That's and it. that can that can bring us back into bondage if we're not careful. Exactly. That can bring us back into bondage where God has already set us free. That's right. And what Paul is talking about, he said, you went back to works. Yeah. When you were set free from, mm -hmm. from works and trying to make it, make happen, it happen and do it in your own strength. Mm -hmm your own ability, your own righteousness. Mm -hmm. He said, you were born into grace mm -hmm. and now it's all about Jesus mm -hmm. and his righteousness mm -hmm. and what he did, he for, did you for you mm -hmm. on the cross. Mm -hmm. See, what happens, you don't want to minimize the cross. No. Either. We talked about that today. The whole message was about the cross. Christ and him crucified. Him crucified. That's it. That is their message. Mm -hmm. That is what sets you free. Yes, it That is. is what we're living in now. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we don't have to go back to trying to work it out ourselves. We do not. And going through works. Of, of our own labors, mm -mm. you know, and that's important because that's yes. it's difficult. Mm -hmm. That's hard. It is, and to know that God has set us free, where we can just rely on Him. It's the difference between I have to do something, or you know, the Lord is in charge, and He just kind of tells you what to do, mm -hmm. and you're simply being obedient at that point. You're not having to do anything within your own strength. That's it. There's a major difference. That's it. That's it. That's freedom. That's that's liberty. It is totally liberty. That's liberty in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, go ahead with your, where you were at. You want, you want the... Um, yes. Yes, please. The Passion. Okay, verse 12 in the Passion. Beloved ones, I plead with you, brothers and sisters, become like me, for I became like you. You did, you did me no wrong. You are well aware that the reason I stayed among you to preach the good news was because of the poor state of my health. And yet, you were so kind to me and did not despise me in my weakness. So it talks about his wow. weakness. Yeah. Paul talks about his weakness. He does talk about you know, it. We, we have weaknesses. We do. We, we do. have weaknesses. And that's, that's real. God can mm -hmm. come in and be himself in your mm -hmm. weakness. That's right. That's it. In his weakness, he's ministering to them. And he's... That's right. He's, 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 he's not feeling them. No, he's not. Mm -hmm. He's not. Yeah. Even though my physical condition put you through an ordeal while I was with you. Wow. Wow. So Paul was going through a, a physical ailment mm -hmm. and weakness in front of them mm -hmm. and they said you are very aware aware of this but how I poured out poured to out. you in the midst of it poured out. I poured out my heart mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. to you amen as spiritual children mm -hmm. and he said to give you this truth this revelation right wow and we've, I feel like we've had that people pour in. Mm -hmm. They could be going through things themselves and struggling right. in their own homes and with their own families, mm -hmm. and yet they're there to pour out and to pour in. Yes. And and that's that's really a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're supposed to do, really, to pour into other people's yes. lives. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what we may be going through or feeling ourselves, you know, we feel to pour out of ourselves. Yes, pour out the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and then as we pour out the Lord, the Lord know, will take care, God will take care of us. Mm -hmm. You know, He'll touch us. He'll heal us. Yes, he he'll will. strengthen us. He will. In our weakness, 
Liam Millistrow. That's right, he's really strong. That's mm -hmm. it. So that's that, that's that's what happened with Paul. And so go read that next part. He's talking about that. And yet you were so kind to me and did not despise me in my weakness, even though my physical condition put you through an ordeal while I was with you. Actually, you received me mm -hmm. and cared for me as though I were an angel from God. Wow. As you would have cared for Jesus Christ himself. Some of you were even willing, if it were possible, to pluck out your own eyes to replace mine. Wow. Where is that kind-hearted and free spirit now? Have I really become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's pretty wow. powerful. Wow. That's pretty powerful. I'll read it in the New King James. Yes. Brethren, I urge you to become like me. I, before I became like you, you have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Wow. They received him at mm -hmm. that point, yeah. even as Christ Jesus. Wow. Isn't that powerful? They did. They did. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Wow. It's it, it's a challenge to, to say the truth it today. Is, it is, it is. <laughs> that that That's a whole, right. you know, it's a challenge mm -hmm. to say the truth. That's right. And you, yeah, I love what he says. He says, have I become your enemy? Wow. Because I tell the truth. But we have to tell mm -hmm. the truth. We do. As, as, we, as we children do. of God, as we sons, do. we have to tell the truth. We do. But it is a challenge because... It isn't like it's well accepted or received, but that's important. That's right. And the Bible says you shall know the truth. And the, and truth. the truth will make, make you, free. you free. And Paul didn't have a choice but no. to bring him into the truth. Mm -hmm. Even though they, 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 they were upset with him, mm -hmm. they rejected him, mm -hmm. they got angry with him. Mm -hmm. Because Paul said, no, no, no. He's trying to save them. He's trying to restore them, bring right. them back. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with passion, with heart. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately... They turned on Paul. Yes. They turned on the one that poured into them. Poured lives. into them and is trying to return them to freedom. Yes. You know, and that's really difficult. It's like you with that bondage, that backing up, and mm -hmm. then you're basically being kind of hogtied, you know, yes. there by the enemy. And when the truth comes to you, mm -hmm. instead of us receiving the truth and being thankful for the truth, it's really just the opposite. Yes. That's why we have to pray for people that their eyes are open that's right. to the truth. That's it. And the truth, the, the light will dispel mm -hmm. the darkness. That's right. You know, I want something about the truth mm -hmm. is that the Bible says, speak the truth in love, in love. that yes. they may grow. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. And, and it just, it's risky because sometimes, a lot of times, people don't want to receive the truth. Especially when it comes to righteousness, holiness, mm -hmm. purity, and that relationship with God. But we have a responsibility to mm -hmm. tell people the truth. We do. We have responsibility before God, first of all. We do. To be truthful, truthful. when it comes to Scripture. Mm -hmm. Bible says, speak it in love, love. but mm -hmm. speak the truth. Mm -hmm. We have to be bold, mm -hmm. okay? Because because it's about rescuing people. It's yes. about saving people. Absolutely. You know? And if your heart is broken, we do that with our own children. Oh, yeah. If we have children and they're going the wrong direction, but you're going to speak the truth in their life, hopefully to pull them back into the right direction because you want to save them. If you love someone, you will speak the truth to yes, them. Yes, you will. You will speak love to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. And that's what Paul is doing here with them. Mm -hmm. But they're not receiving Paul. They're not receiving his love. They're not receiving his word. But that doesn't stop him from no. sharing it. That's right. He's not being liked right now. No. And the, but that doesn't stop him. Sometimes we're not going to be liked. And there are times when people were saying things because that's what they want to hear us say. And they're going to like me. They're going to accept me. They're going to enjoy. I'm going to get this treatment. But that's really not who we are. We're, right. I'm, we're not always here to be liked. No. And to be accepted. We're here to be obedient. That's it. To the Lord. That's and it. stand on his word. And like you said, trust that it's going to set them free mm -hmm. one day. They're going to remember that. If you don't share it, and there's been some hard things that's had to be shared mm -hmm. to whoever God gives us. If you don't share it, then they can't even think back on saying, well, what did they say? They didn't right. seem, they seemed to be okay with it because nothing was, you know, nothing right. counted. And, and the reality is, oh, well, did I didn't because I knew it was going to be a blow up. Mm -hmm. Can't worry about that. No. We have to come boldly with no. the truth. No. As, as Jesus did. That's right. He mm -hmm. did. Jesus spoke the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. Mm -hmm. I am the truth. And they rejected him. Yes. They hated him because he revealed who he was. But to us who believe, he says, he became salvation. He right. became righteousness. He mm -hmm. became everything. Mm -hmm. but he became life. So this is what happened with Paul. Amen. It's unfortunate. But we're going to read on verse 17. 
They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in, in, good, in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. Wow, wow. I like that. Can you read also in the Passion? Uh, verse verse 17. 17. Can't you see what these false teachers are doing? This is so important. They want to win you over so you will side with them. Mm. And basically, you're backing up from your God-given inheritance. Right. Does that even make sense? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're going into bondage right. and releasing and, and walking away from your freedom right. and your inheritance. They want you divided from me from mm. Paul, wow. so you will follow only them. Mm -hmm. Would you call that integrity? That's not integrity. No, no. Isn't it better to seek excellence and integrity always and not just only when I'm with you? Wow. That's powerful. Wow, wow. This is deep teaching from Paul. It really is. Admonishment. Mm -hmm. He's encouraging them. You know, the Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God. He's beseeching them. He's begging them. Please, He's pleading come them. back. Come. Mm -hmm. You know, like, wake up. Mm -hmm. you know, you've been bewitched. Right. You've been fooled. Mm -hmm. You know? So he's pouring out his heart to them as a father, as yes. one that's poured in, mm -hmm. as a spiritual father. Yes. And I'm uh, hoping to, to, you know, to persuade them to come back and, and to, to, to get their minds back on Christ, mm -hmm. on, on the freedom that they had, that they've, they've lost. They've lost it. They've lost it. And then Paul is, 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 is he's compelling them compelling them to come mm -hmm. back. That's what we're called to do. We're supposed to compel right. men, mm -hmm. you know, with all our heart. Amen. Don't compel them to, to us, but we're, we're compelling you to Jesus. To Jesus. And I'm not trying to persuade you to mm -hmm. follow me, but I'm follow Jesus. Follow, Jesus. follow his word. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, um, verse 19 says, my little children for whom I labor in birth again, wow. again, until Christ is formed in you. Mm -hmm. My little children for whom I labor in birth again wow. until Christ is formed in you. And it says right here, you are my dear children, but I agonize in spiritual labor, wow. labor pains once again until the anointed one will be fully formed in your hearts. And that to think about that, when you imagine that and you compare it to just the real labor that a mother has to birth the child, that's agonizing labor. Sometimes it takes hours. Yeah, and yes. I would tell you, there's, in, especially in the old days, there was no medicine. So you just had the pain. So you, mm. he's talking about wow. a deep pain. And you think about that. Mm -hmm. You can't eat. You can't sleep. Right. You know, you are not happy. You are agonizing. Mm -hmm. And so he's really agonizing over people. Wow. And we do that. We're, we're crying out to the Lord. You know, we're not happy. We're unhappy. And we're trusting God. And it pushes us. To kind of get in our prayer closet and yes. just intercede mm -hmm. for the lost yes. and believe God, you know, to open their eyes. And mm -hmm. I tell you, sometimes they, the person might be going through rough times because where somebody's praying for them, mm -hmm. and we're believing God that in that that they're going to cry out mm -hmm. to the Lord and see the light and see that God loves them. So when you talk about the agony that Paul had, you're talking about deep agony. Yes, deep, deep, deep pain, mm -hmm. travail, like you were saying, just not being able to eat or sleep. Can you imagine what he was going through? Because he had birthed them. Mm -hmm. You talked about birth pains, and, and you would know better. But I mean, just the agony that comes with that, you know, the pain. And he said it, that, that the anointed one will be full, fully, fully formed, formed in your heart. In your heart. Mm -hmm. He says, that's my desire. That's my heart's desire. Yes. I'm going before the Father, the, yes. the Abba, and saying, Lord, Restore them, bring them back. Right, bring them back. And now he's he's pleading with them. He's you know he's beseeching them. And that returns us to the sons, which is the heirs, right, and the servants, because you know God has brought us into sonship. Mm -hmm. We don't, we can't leave sonship. No. And when we really think about it, it there, nothing about that makes any sense. But that basically, when you're just your mind is being blocked and you you're walking away from the truth, but the truth will make you free. And yes. freedom is what we want in the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what it is. And so he's bringing back truth. He's bringing back revelation. He's encouraging them with all his heart. And you know, we used this analogy earlier, Aretha. If I can't add this, the prodigal son. Yes. We talked about this. Because remember, the prodigal son yes. left the father. He left the father. So the prodigal son was a son. Right. He was a son. He was a full son. He was a full son. And he understood what that meant. Yes. Because in his mess, he realized mm -hmm. 
He says, well, my father's servants right, right. are fed better than this and treated mm-hmm. better. Yeah, the father's servants in the house right. are living better than I am because I've left the house. Mm-hmm. I've gone back. Right. Basically, I left and went back into exactly. bondage. Bondage, mm-hmm. And now I'm out here. Right. Out back. Mm-hmm. He said, I need to get back to the Father. Yes. I need to get back to that's Him. That's powerful. Go back home. Mm-hmm. And that's what Paul's saying. Come back to Come your back. first love. Come, Come back home mm-hmm. to your revelation. Mm-hmm. And that, that that anointing want to be fully formed in your mm-hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. That you won't go back again. That you won't fall back. Because he gave himself over to that position. Yes. The, the prodigal son talks about that. He gave himself over he to that position because he no longer had a provision. And in mm-hmm. that mess, he said... Wait a minute. That's right. Came to himself. Mm-hmm. He came to himself. And that's our prayer, that the, that the light bulb will go on. And that we will say, you know, I, I remember feeling a peace mm-hmm. in God's presence. I, I, didn't, I wasn't so, you know, stressed and no. oppressed and depressed mm-hmm. and overwhelmed. Somehow, I felt victory, even though the circumstance might not have been much different. Mm-hmm. But under God, when I was just listening to him and mm-hmm. responding to him yes. and being obedient to him, things were just better. That's it. That's it. So we're not called to serve sin. No. And go back to the, the elements and, and the ways right. that God delivers us. Using this is our analogy, right? Yes. But we're we're gonna walk in grace. We're gonna walk in faith. Mm-hmm. We're gonna walk in, in love. Yes. Walk in holiness. Yes. We're gonna walk with in, the Lord in victory. In victory, mm-hmm. right? Yes. As sons. Yes. We need to start declaring, "I'm a son of God." That's right. You know, I'm not a sinner. I'm not going to walk in the world. I'm not going to walk in the flesh. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be religious. No. Okay, I'm not walking. I'm been, I've been set I've free been set from free. that. I've been set free. I'm fully in the house now with, with the Father mm-hmm. and as a son. And now I can come to him as a son. Yes. I can behave. I'm sorry. I like that. I can behave as a son. Because when you yes. think about that, when the son's fully grown, mm-hmm. he's put in a position. And mm-hmm. he has authority. Mm-hmm. He has the authority that his father is giving him. That's right. And it's equivalent. Mm-hmm. He can go and he can speak things because he's the son. That's right. And have reactions. And so we have that authority. So in our situations, we can speak things. Mm-hmm. And know That's that right. you know that things are going to be changed and things are going to be different. And I like what you're saying. Because remember he said earlier... He said, "You can become. You become masters in the house. That's right. You become masters. God give us That's authority right. in His mm-hmm. house now. You're in charge. You're in charge. You're in charge. That's exactly right. So we can speak mm-hmm. faith. We can speak healing. Right. We can speak salvation. Mm-hmm. We can speak our people getting free yes. from bondages. We can declare it. Yes. Because now we're masters. We've grown to masters in the house of God. For authority. We have a, a, a new authority." That we've grown into. And when you walk in that authority, believe you me, people are appreciative. Mm-hmm. When you come with an encouraging word, yes. when you come, you mm-hmm. know, and you're able to just say something positive mm-hmm. in the midst of a very difficult, devastating circumstance, That's right. they appreciate that. They do. They really do. They really do. They do. You know, the Bible says another scripture, I wish I could quote scripture, but it says, All creation groans and travails, waiting. For the appearance of the sons, of, the of, sons God. of God. They're waiting for us to come up. Is somebody going to gonna up. step up? That's right. And be the sons of God that we're talking about right here. Absolutely. And you know, one example is 9.9 9 times out of 10, you walk with someone in a dire circumstance in that moment, in a dire situation, be it healing, you know, be it they're just lost in whatever the situation is, don't have enough finances. And you say to them, can I pray with that's you? That's right. That's it. It. It, it it amazes me that the more people right. will say, I don't know where they stand spiritually. Mm-hmm. They will they will just stop and let you pray at the cash register, right. walking on the exactly. street. You say, Can I pray with you? That's right. That's right. And they'll receive it. That's right. And they'll receive it. And there you get to be who you are. You mm-hmm. get to be that son declaring victory mm-hmm. and speaking That's right. life and light in that dark situation. That's it. That's it. They look for someone that has faith. Mm-hmm. Where's the person of faith here? That's right. Where? We're gonna let them come forth. Where? Bring them forth. We got enough crying. We got enough tears. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We need Jesus. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's what we're called to do in this hour. To right. pray and to declare. That's right. Old Testament says, bring forth the women and wail. Where are they? We need those women that can intercede, that will cry out. Yes. That can get a breakthrough. That can get connected with God. With God. And the Father. Mm-hmm. That we can have an answer to prayers. Yes, can get a breakthrough, can get a prayer through. Yeah, get a prayer through, that's it. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we're about ready to close this, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, I think we got one more verse, Rita. 
My little children for whom I labor again until Christ is formed in you. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubts about you. Wow. No sugarcoating there. No, he didn't sugarcoat it at all. No sugarcoating. Wow. And I, I wish that we could end on a happier note. <laughs> but he said, he said, I wish I could be with you. He said, but I got doubts about you. He said, I'm concerned. My heart is broken over you. He said, I want, you, I want Christ to be formed inside of you. Mm-hmm. And so he's again he's pleading with them. Yes. You know, if you continue, you know, the pastors are going to be back next week. Yes. And they're going to continue in this book, but we're going to learn more about what Paul is saying and how he's ministering and mm-hmm. and their response. But we got to understand that we as believers, yes, we got to walk as sons and sonship and yes. sonship and be who we are and be who we are. Yes. And that authority, Amen. And not allow uh, other voices. That's right. You know, other revelations and truths mm-hmm. to bring us out of faith back into bondage. Absolutely. And no matter what situation you're in, that is the time to step up and be who you are in Christ. That's it. And be who you are in God. That's right. Absolutely. That's 100%. right. 100%. That's right. So we're going to bless you and thank God for you. And uh, we want to pray for everyone that's watching today. Yes. And then hope that God would be formed in you. Yes. Even the more. Mm-hmm. Amen. You be the anointed one will come mm-hmm. inside of you. And you walk in your sonship. Yes. Right? Realizing you're not a servant. Yes. You're not an indentured servant. No. You know, what they did was they sold themselves into slaves, into slavery. Mm-hmm. They sold themselves into bondage. But we're not doing that. We're, we're not willingly giving ourselves back to sin or to bondage. But we're going to go into grace. Yes. We're going to walk in this grace that yes. Jesus has given us, mm-hmm. this salvation he's yes. given us. Amen. Which is free. Mm-hmm. Amen. Feel good about that. I do too. Thank you, Lord. So my wife's gonna pray. Yes. We'll keep pastors in prayer. Yes. Uh, Pastor Kim, Pastor Nancy, as they they travel and they come back, and um, they're they're on a mission of prayer and intercession. Yes. So you want to pray us about all about that, Rita? Thank you, Lord. We just come to you tonight, and we just thank you for this thank word. You, Lord. And Lord, you. we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your Son Jesus Christ, and Lord, you sent him that we. Hallelujah. Yes, can become, Lord. leave the servanthood mm-hmm. and become sons. We thank you, God. We thank, thank you, you that you are our father, thank that you, you are our daddy. Thank this you, is Lord. deep and this is personal. We can cry out to you. Yes, we can share Lord. with you anything and everything. Mm-hmm. So, Lord, we do that. We cry. We lift up our pastors yes, and we just Lord. thank you for them. Thank you, Lord. And we just continue to trust you in Jesus' name. We lift yes, up all of those needing healing. Lord, we lift up our sister Maureen. Yes, we just cry Lord. out to you we and we you, just Father declare Lord. your word and we thank you that, Lord, you are on the move and you're intervening. Yes, Lord, we lift up Nan. We thank you just thank for you, the report Lord. there. We thank lift you, up, um, last night we were praying in prayer meeting about David yes. um, who just was diagnosed with uh, throat cancer and we speak yes, healing Lord. on him, for him and pray for his family that Jesus. are trusted in you. And yes, Lord, Lord, there's so many. We are standing thank on your word Lord. and we're declaring health and yes, healing because Lord. your word said by your stripes we are healed. Yes, and Lord, Lord, your word says with man things are impossible, but not with no, God. Not because with God, all things are possible. Yes. So we're choosing, Lord, to walk oh, yes. in the possible. Yes, we're choosing, Lord. Lord, to walk in the impossible. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for it, God, because you, you're so good and you're so kind and we you're so loving. You, so we continue to trust you. We continue to rest in you. We say be with our pastors as yes, we travel. Lord. Be with them as they minister. Let your presence, Lord, yes, rest upon Jesus. them right now. We thank you for the we victory. You, we believe you for it. We, we look name, to you. Lord. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Thank you so much yes. for just joining us. We appreciate it. Yes. So we we we'll have a wonderful week and be healed. Amen. Amen. And receive everything that God did today. Okay. Yes. Have an awesome night. God bless you. God bless you.